I'm joined by Sir Andrew Whitty, Chief Executive of GlaxoSmithKline, to talk about a challenging past year for the drug maker and his strategy for returning it to growth. Andrew, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry as a whole, um, it feels like there's a, a renaissance underway. There's excitement over new drugs, lots of M&A, valuations are rising. Why has GSK appeared to miss that rising tide? And, and what are you doing to put it right? Well, I'm not sure we've missed the rising tide, but there's no doubt we've had some challenges during 2014, particularly in the US, where we were exposed to some significant price pressure on Advair. Um, as we think about going forward, the strategy we've just laid out to our investors really speaks directly to that. Uh, and that's all about taking advantage of the transaction we've just closed with Novartis, strengthening our consumer healthcare and our vaccine business. We've got a very good pipeline of new products just launched and coming through on pharma. We think those three global businesses can now, as we go through into 2016 and beyond, deliver sustained sales growth with earnings growth ahead of sales rate. We think that that is going to start to really deliver for the organization and for the shareholders, very important. Now, critically, that shape that we've laid out, that good sales growth with faster earnings growth, is regardless of whether Adver generics in America come along or not. And it's quite important to make that point because obviously much of the pain that we've absorbed during 14 and 15 is because of the pricing impact on Adver in America. So that shape going forward really takes that off the table. Now, I don't know if a generic's coming or not. If one doesn't come, then it's upside versus what we've said. If one does come, people don't need to worry too much about it. When you step back and you look at the macro environment we live in, the pressures on affordability, what we're looking to do is to complement the opportunities in the traditional space with much more of an appeal to the volume. That's why we did the transaction with Novartis. It really moves our strategy forward materially. And this puts you at odds, doesn't it, with many in the industry who are getting very excited about a new generation of, of cancer drugs. We've seen this scramble for assets in the biotech sector, many of your rivals spending billions uh, to buy up promising new drugs. And at this very moment, you, you get out of cancer. Um, it's, how, how risky is, is it to take such a contrarian approach to the prevailing mood in pharma right now? I don't think it's particularly risky. I think what we're trying to do is to create the right degree of exposure to what is absolutely clearly an opportunity with which is the massive growth in demand in volume around the world but the growth in demand in volume is going to be at lower prices it's going to be in the consumer space the vaccine space not just in pharmaceuticals i think i'm also nervous that frankly in the developed world where where every government whether it's in the united states or europe is concerned about the affordability of healthcare systems where there is a constant squeeze on that affordability I worry about whether or not there is an unlimited financing capacity for all of the new technologies which are coming through. As far as the M&A is concerned, we're not participants in any of that. We've just done, I think, a very uh, a good deal with Novartis. It hasn't required us to spend GSK cash to make that happen. It's very targeted and we've brought real businesses with real sales, real substance today into GSK right on strategy point. If I think about some of the biotech deals, why should I do that? I have no interest in spending tens of billions of dollars on adding one more drug opportunity to that pipeline, recognizing that the certainty of getting super rewards, I think, is reducing not increasing because of all of the macro pressure in the system. It's been a tough couple of years. Are you still enjoying the job? Are you here for the long run? Listen, I joined the company in 1985. This is my 30th year of working for the company. You, it, it's, uh, it doesn't happen to very many people, but when you get the opportunity to be the chief executive of the company you joined from university, it's a special feeling. You, it's not like you've been hired in as a mercenary or a hired gun. It's your company. You grew up with it. You've been here a long time. Andrew, thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much.